It's the year 2021, and on February, a new layout in Geometry Dash had just dropped. Windless Landscape is a layout made by Para and Ilrel that blew up in popularity rather quickly, and for good reason. A layout featuring complex, unpredictable and awkward gameplay, including disappearing structures, sudden speed changes, and gameplay pauses to complement the complex and unique song. Of course, when I first looked at this layout, I was seriously taken aback at how unique and well-made the gameplay is, and I was really surprised as to how they found such an excellent song that fits so well. The song used in the layout is The City With No Wind by Underscores, and its glitchiness and unusual structure is what really stood out to me. Are you one of those people where when you listen to any song, you immediately imagine a Geometry Dash layout or an Osumania map of that song? Well for this song, I immediately thought of one thing, SVs. This song being an SV map would be absolutely perfect and it would fit it so well. If you're familiar with my mapping, you'd know that it is quite unique and, well, excellent. However, I've never mapped anything SV before, and I had no idea how to use the SV tools or which one to use. It looked way too complex for me. The only time I've ever done anything SV related was to make increasing or decreasing speed change, which I made using Roblox Studio, as I know how to code and have made quite a few games and cool things back in the day. So I thought to myself, why not make an SV map using Roblox Studio? I have zero experiences with SVs, and I know how to code in Roblox. I don't think anyone has ever thought of this idea before, so this should be pretty interesting. And so the journey began. Again. I downloaded the song, put it in the Oso editor, gave it some random difficulty name, and mapped the map. I mapped it where the first part ends, but I decided to extend it later because leaving it there would leave out so much potential, especially when the second part is the most interesting. So now, it was time to map the SVs. But first, let's learn how SVs work. Since we're not manually changing the SVs, we have to open up the .osu file of the map, basically the code of the map, and scroll down to the timing points section. One line is one SV. The first number is where the node is placed at, in seconds and milliseconds. The the second number is the speed of the SV. Minus 100 is the default 1x speed, minus 200 would be 0.5 times speed, minus 50 would be 2 times speed, and so on. The next four numbers are relevant, and the fifth number determines if the change is a speed change or a BPM change. If the number is 0, it's a speed change. If it's 1, it's a BPM change. And if it is a BPM change, the lower the number but excluding 0 and below, the higher the BPM. Now knowing this, I made a simple script in Studio for an increasing or decreasing speed change. M is the variable for the first note where the SV starts. L is the speed that it starts with, so minus a thousand, which is about 0.1 times speed. Then in a continuous loop, I made m increase by 1, meaning the next SV change happens in 1 millisecond, and I increased l by this number here, which I just randomly put in. I set everything together using the format of the SVs and changed the first number and the second. Since there is no way to directly change the map from Roblox Studio, I made it print out into the console, meaning we have to do it manually. Then I would just let it run until it reached my desired node where it ends. It will give me lines of codes that are printed in the output or console tab where errors are sent and with the print function you can make it say whatever you want. I would then just copy what I need and paste it in the .usu file right? Well, a slight issue appears here. Anything that comes up in the console always has the time it was output in the beginning and also where it came from at the end. So obviously if I copy everything from the console and put it in the .usu file it won't work because there's random letters and numbers in the front and back so I had to figure out how to get rid of them. That's when I realized the default notepad that Windows comes with sucks. Like it's actual fucking garbage. When undoing any action it only undoes the previous number changed nothing else it only repeats the changes you just made nothing else everything else that you've made before is lost what the fuck microsoft what what why and also there was no way to select individual columns which i needed after some research i found notepad plus plus and this one actually allows me to select each individual column and also undoes every action that happened before so now i can remove the time in front and the back and the undo button actually works for the thing on the back there's a replace feature on the notepad where you input what you want replaced along with what you want it replaced with. Since it all comes from the same script and line, I copied one of the things in the back and replaced it with nothing deleting it all. This notepad really is excellent and I highly recommend it. I'll link it in the description. With all that having the front and back removed, I just paste it in the timing point section and sure enough, it works. However, we have another problem. If the speed is too low or too high, I change L again and let it run again and this repeats. So I basically just mess around and wait until it's right, which is really, really inefficient and a huge time waste. So I altered the script a little. I made a variable for the first node and the last node where the SV ends. I added an increment variable for in how many milliseconds an SV should have and a starting and ending SV point. Instead of just randomly guessing how much to increase until I get my desired speed, I subtracted the last node with the first node 
and divided the sum of the increment variable. And then we get a number which tells us how many steps it has to take to go from the starting node to the ending node. Then I subtracted the ending SV point with the starting SV point and divided that sum with the previous calculated steps. And now we have the exact number to increase from the starting to ending SV point during the first and last node interval with the desired increment. I also made sure to make the script stop when it reaches the last node and sure enough, it worked perfectly. Now I didn't have to wait a billion years for every single line to print and I don't need to guess how many numbers to add or decrease, saving me a bunch of time and making this like 8 quintillion times easier. Now manually changing the numbers in a script, running the game, copying everything and then stopping the game took too much time. So to make things a little easier and more time efficient, I made a quick UI so I can leave the game running and also input the numbers easier. I made the first part of the song using this to make the notes kind of fly to your receptors and also make the LN speed up. Next up, I had to figure out how stutters work. Stutters are basically where the next note quickly goes to your receptors then slows down, kind of like making it look like it's teleporting and look like the game is stuttering. The way they work is that they set the speed to a high number then immediately decrease the speed to an extremely low number and this repeats for the next notes. So I made a script where it prints out the first SV value and after a number of increments after, the second SV value, which then repeats. To know when the next SV change starts, we have to count how many milliseconds it takes to get to the next note. Setting it to the beat step the notes are mapped in, we go from the first note to the next note. Then we subtract the last note with the first note. That's going to be put into the first increment box. The other increment box, the one where the SV changes to the slow one, can also be changed. A low number like 1 makes it less stuttery, something like 10 would make it very stuttery. See how I put both print prompts on the same line? Well, this is because if you set the second print prompt in a new line, since after every print it shows which script it came from and the exact line of it, doing it like this will have two different lines, which makes it slightly more annoying annoying and more time consuming changing it. So by putting them on the same line, the number of where the line is stays the same. With this, I made the beginning of the map as the song gradually starts to glitch out and the stutters fit that perfectly. I also wanted to make a script where the stutter increasingly gets faster or slower and I did so by making you able to increase the first SV change, making it either go faster or slower. Before the first drop, the song stops then suddenly goes on again. To make a stop in the gameplay, we have to make the BPM incredibly low, then when the note starts, you put it back to its original BPM again. Setting a BPM to complete zero isn't possible, even though it says so in the preview. The lowest it can go is 0.001, which is fine because you can't tell the difference anyways. So I set it to some incredibly high number to ensure that the BPM is as low as it can go. Then once the note starts, I set it back to its original BPM. I wasn't really satisfied with how it stops at the receptors. If it stopped before it reached the receptors, I feel like it would look way cooler, but we'll get to that later. From here, it was a smooth ride, until disaster struck. For some reason, my dumbass set the BPM to 86, even though the song's BPM is actually 85, which means every single note is off sync and misaligned. That means I had to remap the entire map with the actual BPM of 85, which wasn't too huge of an issue. But since the notes start differently than before, every single SV I made had to go. I had to start from zero again. I don't even know how I didn't realize this at first. This project is like two years old and it took me two years to realize the BPM was off. Like, listen to this. It sounds okay at first, right? It sounds timed. And then you skip to this part and it's just... Literally all it takes is just to search up the city with no wind BPM and then Wait, what? Oh my bad, I was using fucking Bing, dude. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I found the actual BPM using Google. Who the fuck actually uses Bing? Like, genuinely, it has no point of existing. With everything remapped, it was time for the last part, which is the most intense part. This part of the song has a lot of stops, which is perfect for a bunch of BPM stops. However, I wanted to make it a bit more unique. You know how in Polyrhythm, the last part doesn't show any notes other than the one you're about to hit, and it just flies up as it goes on? I wanted to make the last part kind of like that, where in some areas, some notes are shown, and in some areas, or not, and also a part where the notes change positions. After hours of research, I figured it out. Here's how it works. Let's, for example, take the notes 147573 and 147794. Let's say the gameplay after the first note is already stopped, but one millisecond before the next note, so in this case, 147793, I set the BPM to a really low number, so a really high BPM. What this does is basically push the next note away. Know how in scroll speeds, where for example, a scroll speed of 15, distance between the notes are shorter, and it takes a long time to reach, but in a scroll speed of 30, the note is way further away, but goes down way faster. This is exactly that. For a millisecond, we are setting the BPM so high, it will go down incredibly fast to the receptors, but therefore be at a way higher position. And then a millisecond after, we freeze the note. And since you can see how the notes are positioned during a different BPM, or SP before you even reach the note, once the BPM is frozen, it should show the note's next position from the incredibly high BPM. And once we reach the actual note, it should reach the receptors and freeze again. So I feel like 5 will put it around the top, so I feel like 7 a bit lower, so I feel like 1 even off the screen, depending on your scroll speed. The result? Let's go. 
Now I can make the previous BPM stops I made before with the same principle. And now they actually teleport to the receptors. I just had to figure out how to make the next notes not appear. Let's take the previous examples again. Now where the actual note starts, I set the BPM to a really high BPM, something like 0 0.1. Then a millisecond after that, we freeze it again. We are pushing the next notes away again, but this time, the notes that come after the one we're about to hit. So basically, once the actual note is hit, we set the speed even higher to create a huge distance from the next upcoming notes. And then a millisecond after the note has been hit, we freeze it again. So instead of this, we now have this. And if I want them closer, instead of a high BPM, I just set a really low BPM. I also made a speeding up BPM stutter effect, the same principles as this V1, and also a normal BPM stutter effect, which I think I never ended up using. For the last part, except the BPM stutters, I actually mapped the BPMs manually, because there's two little notes and the part is pretty short, so I couldn't be bothered to make a script for it. With that, I have everything I needed to map the rest of the map, and after hours of continuous mapping, giving it a proper difficulty name and background, the map is finally finished! Oh wait, no. No, it's not. I was trying to install Windows 11 because Premiere Pro was just acting really laggy. And I wanted to try 11 since I actually never tried it. And while I was installing it and wanted to format my other SSD to install Windows on it, I didn't know if it actually formatted it or not. So I clicked the format button again and I accidentally deleted my fucking hard drive. Why does Windows not show a pop-up? Like, oh, do you really want to format this hard drive? It just did it. I just lost everything, including my screenshots, my maps, everything. It was all gone. Luckily, there's this amazing program called DMDE. It's a recovery program that lets you recover up to 4,000 files regardless of type and size for free. Every single recovery program I've stumbled across lets you scan it, show the results, and the second you want to recover something, it goes, oh, you gotta pay, man. Oh, you gotta, you gotta buy a trial. Why can't you just let me at least recover like a 60 kilobyte file? It doesn't even let me do that. This program really is just excellent. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'll link it in the description. Okay, the map is actually finished now. So while I was finishing this map, something dawned on me. Instead of printing everything into the console, I could have just made it output into a text box, making it easier to copy and it won't have the stupid time and script lines on the side. I didn't think about that for some reason. And also, apparently in the Oso editor, you can select notes and copy them. And doing so will copy the code of it, including its position. I didn't think about that either. This is not that big of a deal though, because making the output into the text box actually gives me a timeout earlier than printing it into the output. And having it put into a text box not only makes it really lag every time, It also gives me an error saying there's a character limit, which means that printing tolerates more lines than putting it in a text box. With that being said, Roblox just isn't reliable for this. As for either putting it into a text box or printing it, at some point it will give me a timeout, meaning there's a limit it can handle. Which is not that big of a deal, because I don't map SVs with many notes at once. And considering the fact that the text box tolerates way less lines than the print output does, that really takes away the convenience of it. While recording, I also realized that I am not the first one to have made a map of this song. Apparently people were mapping the song since 2021. So it's safe to say that I'm kind of late. With the copy notes thing, I made a separate version of the stuttering effect and adjusted the script so it can handle the copied text from the editor. And it does work, but I can't be honest to change it for the rest of the effects. I'll just do that later. And I also made a BPM speed up with the notes disappearing thing as an option with the copy notes text thing. And I adjusted the script like this. This is confusing as fuck, bro. I can't be honest to explain. And with that, you can make something like this. I'll probably change the map a little later down the line, but regardless, I'm really happy with how this map turned out. I started this project around early 2022 and finished it on November 2024, so this project took me a good two years. Even though for most of the time, I literally forgot about the existence of this thing, I can't even lie. With that being said, I really hope you liked this video, and I'll see you next time. Praise the Lord, God bless.